In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Dear Reverend Father, dear seminarians, dear brothers, dear faithful, Christmas is a time of joy. The joy that we experience comes from a passion that exists in our souls, the passion of love. We love some person, we long to be in their presence, then when we see them, our heart moves and joy fills our heart. So the conditions for joy are two. First of all, a love for the person. And then secondly, that you're in the presence of that person. Once those conditions are fulfilled, then joy happens, as it were, automatically. And if Christmas is for us a time of joy, it is precisely because we love God. We recognize our complete wretchedness in the absence of God. We know that our first parents offended him. Their descendants committed innumerable crimes against him. And God, as it were, withdrew himself from the human race. He sort of left humans to their own wicked devices because they rejected him. The human race was in a state of ruin, enslaved to the devil, with no way out, as it were, no power to fix the terrible predicament that our species, our, our human race, was in. Yet God promises to once more draw close to man and in such a way that he will then be closer to men than he ever was to our first parents, Adam and Eve. He himself will become a man, the most perfect man, the most adorable man, the most virtuous, the most exemplary man. And when he comes on Christmas Day, those who are looking forward to him rejoice and rejoice greatly. The, the two conditions for their joy are fulfilled. They love God and they are in the presence of God. God is present with them as Emmanuel, God with us. And what do human beings do when they experience joy? Quite naturally, they break out in song. They sing songs. Song is the outward manifestation of the joy that exists in the human heart. And if there's any season at all at which men their songs employ, when heaven and nature sing, when fields, floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy, it's definitely the Christmas season. If some do not feel joy at Christmas time, at least a supernatural joy, the real Christmas joy. It's really because there's something wrong with their soul. If they do not feel that supernatural Christmas joy at Christmas time, it is because they do not love God. They're not looking for God. It's kind of like waking up on Christmas morning then rushing to the Christmas tree and finding your Christmas present there with your name on it. And then you open your present and you look in to see, what did I get? And if there's something in there that, that you love and that you wanted and that you anticipated, that you were desiring to possess, then you're full of joy. But if you find there's something you do not want and even something you do not like, then you don't have joy. You rather have sorrow. And this is how it happens for those who do not love God. They wake up on Christmas and they say, what did I get? And the answer is, you got God. And this answer fills them with indifference or even sorrow. They don't want God in their life. They're not interested in God. And so they have what we call a Scroogey Christmas. We must make sure for us as, as Catholics that this does not happen. We must make sure that we really, really want God. We really want our Lord Jesus Christ. We really want his mother. We're looking for them. We love them. We rejoice in their presence. We place ourselves in total dependence upon them. We habitually turn to them at all times throughout our lives for all that we need. 
the most important things that we seek to possess. They're only going to give us joy if we love them. Our faith is the beginning of this love, our belief. St. Thomas has a question on joy in his Summa, and he treats an objection about joy that could well apply to Christmas time. The question is whether joy comes from love of God or whether it comes from something else. Does the love of God, caritas, produce joy? And the objection says no, it doesn't produce joy. And the reason is that it doesn't fulfill one of the conditions for joy. If the love of God produced joy, God would have to be present. But God is not present. God is absent. And when the one you love is absent and not present, you're not filled with joy. You're filled with sorrow when you're not in the presence of your beloved. So since God is absent, we don't have joy. And so someone could say, well, we're, we're not at Bethlehem. We weren't there. When our Lord came, we're not in the presence of our Lord. Thus, there's no joy at Christmas time. St. Thomas answers by saying, well, it's true that we are absent from our Lord in the body. We do not see him with our eyes, with, our, with the eyes of our soul, as it were, with a direct vision, as though in heaven, those in heaven do see him. Nevertheless, it's obvious that he is not completely absent to us. On the contrary, God is present to those who love him by dwelling in their souls, by his grace. Our Lord, if you're in the state of grace, is inside of you. He is in your soul. You possess him. In a sense, he's closer to you than anybody you know. Of course, obviously, he's, he's also physically present here on our altars under the appearance of bread. And we receive him in this very intimate manner in the sacrament of Holy Communion. And that is supposed to make you joyful, very joyful. Even we may say it's meant to be the primary joy of your life, the very first joy, the whole reference point for your joy, the joy that you experience in your human condition. Our Lord is not only not absent from me, but he's closer to me, at least he's meant to be closer to me than my family and my friends. He's in my very soul. At the same time, though we rejoice at the presence of our Lord in us and we rejoice all the more during this Christmas season, we have to recognize that our joy on this earth is an incomplete joy. It's not finished. It's lacking in some respects. St. Thomas explains why this is the case. Joy is full, incomplete, only when it's experienced in such a way there's nothing more to be desired. But as long as we're in this life, the desire that comes from our love of God is incomplete. Of course, the desire that comes from all of our loves is incomplete. But that's also true of the love of God. The difference is the desire we have that comes from the love of God has the possibility of making us have complete joy. Whereas nothing else that exists, no creature, can ever make our joy complete. But as long as we're in this life, the joy that we derive from our love of God and the presence of God with us will always be incomplete. Our Christmases are times of incomplete joy. And so we celebrate the feast again and again throughout our lifetime. We're very happy to have our Lord in our souls but really, we want him to be even closer to us. Him dwelling in our souls is not close enough. We want to possess him, as it were, in our entire being through the beatific vision. We want him to so inform our soul 
that he occupies us utterly, completely, totally. And when that happens, one day we make it to heaven. When we possess that beatific vision, there will be nothing else for us to desire. Our joy will be full. Until that happens, we will have some joy, but only a partial joy. At least, as I say, if we love God. And that joy is as intense on this earth as our love of God is intense. Our supernatural joy in this life, in other words, is proportionate to our holiness. You are joyful to the degree that you are holy. It's kind of like running a race. And this is, again, sort of an adaptation of St. Thomas's explanation. He says, well, he doesn't say, I, I say, um, adapting his, what he says. So let's think about those who run a race. They who run have a great love of and desire of the finish line. They want to possess the finish line. And as they run, they're already experiencing something of the finish line because they're drawing closer to that finish line. And the faster they run and the closer they get to that finish line, the more their desire of the finish line gives them joy. Their joy increases as they get closer. Once they pass the finish line, their joy is complete. They possess the finish line completely and they can rest in its possession. And this is similar to us. We're in a race to heaven. It's not a race of time. We're not racing to old age and death. But it's a race of holiness. As we advance in holiness, we draw closer to God. Our love of God increases and our possession of God increases. And as this happens, we experience a greater joy in this possession of God. But as much as our holiness might increase in this life, as much as our joy in the possession of God increases as we get holier and holier, that joy yet will never be complete in this life. Because of the fact that we cannot possess God perfectly, that can only happen in the next life. But how much incentive for us, my dear faithful, while we're in this life, to desire this increase in holiness, to desire this increase in the love of God, it is a very good and holy thing for us to desire the joy of the Lord. Your joy in this life, this supernatural joy that you might have, is an anticipation of that complete joy in the next life. It's a taste of heavenly joy, a taste of heaven itself, because heaven is God. In other words, your possession of true Christmas joy here below determines whether or not you will possess full and eternal joy hereafter. If you like the taste of that joy, and you want that joy, you make that joy your primary joy, the main joy that you want, then you will not let it go. You will not stop loving God. What is so tragic today, as you know, is that most people seek a natural Christmas joy. They want Christmas joy without Christ. We Christians, as you know, we, we, in order to complement our joy of the possession of God, of the presence of God amongst us on Christmas Day, we exchange gifts among one another. God has given us a gift himself, and we imitate him by giving gifts to one another. And this gives us a certain natural joy that complements our supernatural joy that we experience in the possession of God. But today there's the one without the other often. There's the joy at the exchange of Christmas gifts and the gathering of family members, but there's no joy 
at the reception of God's gift and no gathering around the crib at Bethlehem. And the most tragic thing is that sometimes, in some cases, this can turn Christmas into a time of sorrow for some people. People build up this sort of Christmas experience of purely natural joys. And when Christmas comes around, they, they anticipate those merely human joys. They, they look forward to those merely human joys. But times change and those human joys are withdrawn, uh, withdrawn. And then Christmas Day comes around again. For whatever reason, there's, there's uh, no one there to exchange gifts with. Uh, family members are dead or family members are absent in different places. They're not able to be there. There's no people to share Christmas with. And there's no Christ. As a result, people can become very depressed and, and even suicidal at Christmas time. It's a sad fact. In Queensland, they have a program called Check Your Mate, which is, I would say, very charitable. It's, it's precisely to look out for people at Christmas time to make sure that they have someone to share Christmas with so that they do not commit suicide especially the, the, the veterans. In situations like this, the Feast of Christmas, which is that of God bringing life to the world through His Son, Christmas itself becomes an occasion of death. What was meant by God to be the bringing of life to the world becomes the bringing of death to some when they take their own lives in the deprivation of their Christmas joy, their merely human Christmas joy. Christmas without Christ is not only joyless, but positively dangerous. For us Catholics, Christmas is a time of joy, as I say, because it's the coming of someone we love, and hopefully someone we love more than anyone else. It is a partial joy, like all joys in this life. But it is the truest joy, the most secure joy that we can possess in this life. It is a joy to the world that the Lord has come. We receive our King. And if we receive our Lord, we have a joy that no man can take from us. On this day, this Christmas day of 2018, let us taste that Christmas joy. Let us taste heaven so that one day our joy may be complete there forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.